Yeah, so there are some things I would um, hope to be able to, to speak about. And for right now, they might be best uh, thought of as connected to the morning exercise. And the reason I wanted to speak about it now was so that we could pursue it some more tomorrow in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> so then. And the most important part. I like it this close. <laughs> so, Mr. Gurdjieff. Certainly in the tales, in Beelzebub's tales, uh, speaks about sacred impulses. And my teacher, Mr. Bennett, very similar uh, in his travels to Gurdjieff, tried to find the sources or the same lineages, and I think found many and maybe ones other than Gurdjieff was with, but nevertheless came back with uh, a way of speaking about the sacred impulses because of the Sufi brotherhoods he was in touch with <clears throat> as he traveled. And the way he spoke about them to us, I think some of you have heard me speak about this before, but the way he spoke about them to us was as sacred impulses that he called uh, the Lataif. And we were shown exercises uh, to work with the, these impulses. And of course, as we all turn toward ourselves and whatever it is that there can be to open to. We're beginning from where we are, and this is the place from which we begin. And I think it was Bennett's uh, intention to try and position or place us internally well, so that if there was something that could also touch us at the place from which we begin, we might be sensitive to it or open to it or aware that that was occurring. And so the way Bennett spoke about it was as if the entire region of this part of our body <laughs> was a humming, vibrating sphere with the capacity to be a receptor like a, to the higher sacred impulses and the finer impulses. And yet, though it was the entire region of our body here, he had us work with it the way he was shown when he was traveling prior to that synthesis as if there were regions in that sphere. And here, in the lower right part of the torso, kind of just under the rib cage, I'm going to now diverge. I'm going to speak about it first in the way it's come to have meaning for me now. Uh, and I hope by the end I'll use the words he used. So tomorrow morning, we will have some type of contact with what we worked with this morning and then turn toward this work 
with the Lataif, or the stages of illumination. And here, it, it's simple, really. Um, we each know quite a bit about ourselves at this point in our life, both who we are internally and how we are with others, and how we are in the world. We know our strengths and we know our limitations. We know the size and parameters of our heart. And this here could be called an an invitation to being, an invitation for the sacred impulses to come nearer or that we're open to them. It's a longing, which is a word I used this morning. And that was here. And sometimes we just put our attention there and breathed. Sometimes we worked with zikr and put our attention here. It was a zikr of the breath, not a zikr that included repetition like the names of God. It was a breathing zikr with exhalations and a hold. But nevertheless, it was here. And I'm, in a way, inviting you now to kind of put your awareness into that part of yourself and what would it be what would it be like as I was saying this morning to be as open and wide as relaxed as possible inviting the sacred impulse inviting being what does it mean to invite to call toward to beckon how much longing there would be to have that kind of beckoning here. Ah, okay. Now Bennett called it wish. And he talked about it as this t- distinction between how we see ourselves to be and how we might be if we were illumined, illuminated. And there's this gap, and that that would give rise to this wish for being. So he spoke a lot about the wish for being. And as I work with that all these years, what it has kind of simply come down to, the word wish is beautiful and wonderful, it makes sense to me, is I need to beckon it. The longing has to be there. Even if I see the gap between who I am as I observe myself and what might be possible for a human being, that doesn't mean I'm open to it. (laughs) I'm just in this gap. What does it mean for me to have great longing? And I think everyone knows in their life they've had experience of longing for something. So longing for being, longing for the sacred impulse to be able to touch me here. And the second one, Ah, I should say just for a moment these locations and the colors associated with each of them are different from Sufi order to Sufi order the Kuwaiti compared to the Indian compared to the Persian is different in all of the different teques so nevertheless that being true there's something about this region and I'll just then go back to what I was saying. So, and this region was the second region for the Lataif, the second Lataif. Which me, for me, after these years, has become, if I have truly been able to to feel moved to beckon and invite being and the sacred impulse toward me, and it begins to move toward me, the next step is to welcome it. It's an opening that is asked for that needs to occur. Uh, The door, a bit open. And Bennett called it hope, almost as if there was an inner friend. Because if we're lost in our lives or we feel small or constrained or trapped or without, without hope, he was saying, wish, hope. And what I'm saying to you in my life is that it has become an invitation and then as much as is possible, a true welcoming 
How hospitable can I be, really, to the finer? If the higher were to come and, and wish to enter this corporeal, would I truly welcome it, or what would I do, really? What would you do? Who would you be? Could you welcome it? Yeah? And so this work here is to encourage the welcoming. And the third was on the right, upper right part of the torso. And this is if the friend has arrived. And here, it's a bit as if, if any have had, I'm sure it's true, some unusual, in maybe too complicated a word, is anomalous experience, something out of the ordinary, where something has touched you, and it is not you, not not you, but is it is arrived, then you have confirmation. This is different than longing and inviting and different than welcoming and opening. This is confirmation. This is confidence. This is a way to move forward. Um, it aims you in life, regardless of circumstances, if you can be reminded to come back to this. And Bennett called this faith, um, a word that is difficult for me. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. But the experience of it, if the anomalous or the unusual experience, this crack in the cosmic egg has occurred for you, it's this clarion call of ha-ha confidence. They weren't all just writing books. <laughs> they weren't all just speaking about something and making things up. There's a clarity to it. Third lataif. And the fourth lataif was just about three fingers below here, right in this part of the body. And for me, this has become a way of speaking about this, is to say, um, it's just very natural. If this is at all stirring, what occurs is gratitude and humbleness. Just humbleness. And it's here. And then it called this um, acceptance, also obedience, given the person he was. I'm not sure he was told this in the teches, but it was, if all of this is possible, of course you would want to be obedient toward it as these things began to touch and move inside you. Faith is a word that's difficult for me. Obedience is a word that's difficult for maybe some or me. Nevertheless, it, it's for me become What does it mean to have gratitude? And not just say I'm grateful, but to actually have it flowering, this gratitude just unfolding. And then in the center of the chest, where at that point, Bennett, and Bennett, as I did this last year as well, sorry I'm repeating myself for those who saw it, Bennett would always close his eyes and go, wish, <laughs> you know, hope. And so then when he got to this fifth lataif, it was as if they were all now alive and we were being touched internally by these sacred impulses. And this is bliss. This is just an unfolding deluge and eruption and emergence of bliss uh, in your life. And Bennett called it love. And I, I think of the love actually as coming as because of the, of the bliss. It could be either way around. It doesn't really matter at all. The, the words don't matter. So those were the five lataif. Yeah? Inviting being, welcoming. This clarion confidence in it. If, it, if the friend has arrived, the gratefulness, and then you could call it uh, the diamond heart itself of, of bliss. And then there were two more, the sixth and seventh lataif, one associated with, in some schools with Ajna, the third eye, and one with the crown chakra. And this one was an understanding of being 
And this was an, an just awe, pure awe of being. And I use the word being carefully here because, or advisedly, because it could just as easily be being and non-being because it's beyond the being that we proceed with in our lives. It's something at least other than the being we're used to, if non-being is too negative a word. So tomorrow morning, yeah, I would like to begin working with the La Taif in the morning exercise. And working with is just a strange way of talking about it. It's a question really of trying to orient towards something, to turn towards something, and then saying, if, if, the, if, if the guest wishes to come, I'm here to receive it. Uh, now, all that being said, anything there that needs clarity or repeating, or is that just fine the way it is? Can we let it be? For now, yes. How did you call that? Up? These these gestures, the word that you use. Lataif. Lataif. L a t a i f. Okay. And maybe in the plural, the Latifa. Here, right. upper right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bennett called it faith. Um, I, I think of it as uh, the word. Is, is, the English words just aren't, aren't quite right, but it's um, confidence. It's confidence. clarity that it's not just the inviting and welcoming. It's that something has touched or arrived, and it's like, ah, even a tincture just the smallest drop or a big flood, either way, something is other than, uh, yes, everything I was hoping for, yes, when it arrives, things, it's, everything is different. You can then move forward with a kind of confidence, mm -hmm. even if you don't have that experience anymore. It resonates, it's a memory. It has occurred. So your whole rest of your life is with this in mind, that this has entered you. Yeah. And yet your life may again be very small and, we, and as if you're not experiencing it, but it, it has touched. So it's, he called it faith. To me it's, yeah, confidence. The guest entered. Yeah. Now, this was always the hardest one for me. To, yeah. I, and I'll get to that in a moment. That's where we're going next, is this thing about why, it, yeah, uh, well, yeah, okay. So to, to, to move on a bit forward and to change the, out of the more Sufi and Mr. Bennett and Mr. Gurdjieff and the, the, the words that have to do with the spiritual and to look at the psycho-spiritual, uh, there's this concept that this might all be real. I, my, probably you all have this kind of resonance with all of this. You might not be here without some type of resonance with this. And this concept has to do with that we, though saying we wish to invite, we long for, we welcome, we want, we would, we would be so great, we repress the sublime. We actually somehow internally might be so changed, altered, that we hold it off. We keep it from occurring. We wish and long and welcome and invite. And if it touches us, oh, wait, 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 wait. And the expression that Roberto Asagioli used was the repression of the sublime. Yeah, it's like, Yes, yes, yes. And then something goes, no, 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 no. Yeah, because what happens? How destabilizing might that be to the part of us that is ego, yeah, that has a personality? It might be in its true position, 
if all of this occurred, but it, I, you know, it, it tenses and, 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 and says, wait a minute, please, just maybe tomorrow, <laughs> maybe when I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. So what I wanted to do at this point was to have you break into small groups, four or five people, and then just share with one another to the degree you choose to, wish to, or are able to, how you think in your life you hold off the sublime. How do you keep a wall up or repress or suppress the sublime? What is it about you? And it could be my pride, yeah? And it could be anxiety, and it could be I'm too busy. I, whatever it is for you, it doesn't really matter. But see if you can find, name, and share, if you're willing, how you think. If the friend, to use that word that Mev, Mevlana would use, were to arrive, how, what in you would go, oh, not today, please, <laughs> and close the door. Does that make sense? Yeah? So small groups of four or five people and speak about with each other whatever you can share about, mm, I don't know what to call it. You can call it repressing the sublime and that makes it sound so highfalutin. Uh, you know, um, it could just be, you know, I think I stay closed because of this. And it might be more, some, more grounded. I just seem to stay a bit cramped up and closed because of this part of myself. So you don't even have to think about the sublime to take a look at, you know, if this part opened up a little, that might not be a bad idea. So it could be from the very mundane to something much more mm, sublime about yourself that you wish not to have happen. Yeah? So how do we do into groups of four or five? Do we count off or, or do you want to do the files that you were in? <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a bad idea, because when you're moving as a file, you could be moving with this in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So where was the last file one? Who, who was in file? Yeah, let's stand up, for, for, as if we were going to do that movement again. I was file one. Uh, you mean like this? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone find a place in the room.